take them. Now you wouldn't want to go by yourself. Don't let them feel forsaken. Don't send those kids to Sunday school. Go right along with the golden rule. Do everything that a daddy would do and get out of bed and take them. Well, hello again, everybody. It's Brother Peter, and I've got another announcement. Yes, it is. It's time to go back to Sunday school. Welcome back to Sunday school. We are regathering for Sunday school uh, starting Sunday, November 1st. You'll be able to meet with your Sunday school class. Um, however, just like everything else in this crazy mixed up world, uh, it's going to take a little bit of adjustment and we're going to have to do things slightly differently. Most of you in the adult Sunday school classes will get to meet in your nice, warm, familiar Sunday school room. But as you know, uh, we have a lot of small rooms that do not lend themselves well to, uh, to gatherings of any size, really. Uh, uh, fortunately, our, our, our building was designed to <laughs> keep people close, to make people feel close. And so we're trying to keep people apart. So um, we are going to gather for Sunday school, but here's kind of the way it's going to go. Um, every class will have a particular kind of system protocol, if you will, to follow. Um, uh, Pastor Debbie has uh, worked very hard over the last couple of weeks, as has the session, to uh, develop uh, a, a set of protocols for every Sunday school class. So uh, every teacher is going to get a, uh, a, a paper with all the, th of the things that we have to follow uh, and then he or she will distribute them to you. So be looking in the next several days for something in the mail, something by email, uh, however you receive your uh, communications and uh, it will have a p piece of paper that you can print out or you can look at and uh, it'll tell you how exactly you can go to Sunday school. Every class will have its own entry exit place uh, and we're going to um, make it so uh, we, we don't do much passing of each other in the halls uh, because it's the passing of each other in our narrow hallways that is going to cause uh, some danger. So when you arrive on Sunday morning, November 1st at 9.30 for Sunday school, 9.45 for some, uh, then you will go to your, you will park near your entrance, you go in your entrance, and then you'll go directly to your Sunday school room, and then you can meet for Sunday school. Now, um, we do have to take extra precautions. We will be uh, sanitizing those rooms before and after, and you will need to wear a mask on the way in and wear a mask on the way out. And I know for some of you that is just like a, it's, it's nigh unto a swear word, but uh, we are, um, we are uh, being kind and neighborly and, and uh, we are doing the safest thing and this is the, what we have to do in order to make this happen. Uh, remember, we just preached a sermon on Sunday on, on uh, the backdrop of love, how love we do everything out of love. And so we love our people and we want to meet with them, but we want to be safe and careful. So mask while you're moving. Uh, we be, be very uh, aware of the bathroom situation. So uh, if somebody's in there, then you wait and you know, don't try not to cross paths. We just once again, being extra careful. Now, uh, children and youth Sunday school will also be meeting. Um, so, those of you who are coming to Sunday school who have children, uh, we do have a place for them to, to meet and have, have their regular Sunday school class. But, uh, it will be a, all this children's Sunday school classes and youth and toddlers and nursery will be in the Family Life Center. So, uh, we've got rooms that we're designating there, we're fixing up for that. And so, what you'll do is you will stop by the uh, Family Life Center, you will uh, check in your kids there, and uh, then you will go ahead and go on and park by your uh, designated entry, and you will go there. Then when you finish Sunday school and you're going on to the church service, your children will already be there. And won't that be 
nice and convenient. So uh, once again, you'll have more communication coming out about all these things. We have had to uh, relocate a couple of adult Sunday school classes to larger spaces. So you're going to meet in a, in, in a different place. That'll all be on your communication sheet. And we've uh, discussed this uh, at length with uh, the session and with the Sunday school leaders. So everybody should be in the know. Everybody should be uh, should have their instructions and all of this, I am so confident, will work like a well-oiled machine on November 1st. Um, this also means that uh, we will be adjusting our service times again. So we will go back to our uh, regularly scheduled times. So we will have our uh, 8.30 service at 8.30 in the FLC still. We're still not ready to modify the, the small sanctuary for that service. So 8.30 service will still be in the Family Life Center. And then we will uh, have Sunday school at 9.30, 9.35, 9.45-ish. And then uh, we will have our later service back at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. So 8.30, 9.45, 11 o'clock, just like uh, most of you are used to. Now, we are continuing the evening service on Sunday at 6.30. We have had such a wonderful time with the evening service. And uh, we, we, it's just a, just a wonderful worship experience. If you haven't tried it, uh, you need to try it. So the next time, <laughs> next time you, uh, uh, you know, wake up late and you're thinking, oh no, I don't have any time to get to church. Hey, chill. Have an extra cup of coffee. Just come and join us at 630. You'll hear the same message content. You will have a great worship experience and uh, it'll be a lot of uh, uh, just, just a blessing to you. So uh, I wanted to tell you all those things, but I also wanted to add uh, a, a little bit of something else because we're going to experience this as we move forward into the great unknown. Uh, and that is, um, basically, we're finding that we, we have three basic groups of people that are processing and dealing with this whole pandemic situation in slightly different ways. And I'm going to, uh, the way that I imagine this in my head, and I'll try to make it very simple, is basically we have uh, green people, yellow people, and red people. Uh, the green people are very, very comfortable moving about in the world. They're, they're not very concerned, and, and, and that's totally okay. They like to hug. They like to handshake. They like to, uh, to move about and be as normal as they can, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, the yellow people, uh, on the other hand, are uh, confident going out, but, but like to be cautious. Uh, they get kind of nervous when, when crowds get too close, and uh, they don't like to put themselves in situations where uh, there is a possibility that, uh, that they might contract the dreaded disease. And so uh, uh, they, they just proceed with caution. The red people, on the other hand, are, uh, are very cautious. Perhaps, they're, uh, perhaps they're, they're at risk or they're compromised in some way that makes them feel very nervous about being around almost anybody. And that is okay too, because everybody has to uh, you sort of you know, have this internal compass that uh, helps you uh, move about in the world. Now, the challenge for us as a church and especially in Sunday school, is we, we don't want any one of those people groups to feel like they're excluded, like they can't come, like they, they, they might come and, and it would be crazy and it would make them anxious and nervous and all those kinds of things. So um, what, what, I, what I encourage you to do, well, and actually we're going to come up with some sort of system where you can sort of self-identify. So, so people will know if you're if you fit into the green category, the yellow category, or the red category, it might be a bracelet, it might be a you know a a, a pin, whatever it might be. Uh, but this gonna what it's gonna do is it's gonna help us to really honor and respect and love each other. You know, one of the verses that uh, are used in my sermon on Sunday was that we uh, that each one consider the other as more important than themselves. And nowhere does this uh, come into play more than the situation we're dealing with now. So I encourage you, if you are a green person, find all the green people and love all over them. Uh, if you encounter a yellow person, then sort of ask them first, you know, are you okay with this? 
And then if, if you see a red person, uh, you know, just just do the do the big air high five, do the you know wave, the holy wave, and and all that stuff. Because not because of anything else, but that we're all loving and honoring and respecting each other, and vice versa. With uh, you know, red folks don't don't get freaked out. Just just be feel okay with being honest with people and say, I'm just really not comfortable with that. And let's all communicate that way so that we can, uh, and, and let's not let it be awkward or get offended or anything else like that. Like we, we really need to negotiate this and we really need to uh, figure out how to interact appropriately and be the body of Christ to one another. We, we, want, we want green, yellow, and red people all over our campus and we want to make sure that we create an environment where they, they all can feel like they're, like they're included, like they're part of everything. Uh, we will, of course, be continuing uh, in our digital efforts in our online church and uh, all of our different events. And so anytime you feel uncomfortable, you can always join us there. And we are working very hard. We have a team of people who is working absolutely overtime to uh, continue to improve that experience. So it's not just, well, here we're having church in the room and you get to look on we're looking um, to improve that to where you you just feel more and more and more apart and are able to engage with everybody in, that's uh, that's worshiping together. So uh, you know we we're going to continue in that direction. I uh, want to give just a few shout outs here. I want to give a shout out to Pastor Debbie who has been uh, uh, calling people, communicating with people, uh, visiting when appropriate, when when possible. Uh, just really has kept her finger on the pulse of everything, and I sure love her and appreciate her for that. Uh, also, uh, your your elders, man, we had a great session meeting on Monday. It was not full of fear and anxiety. It was full of okay, we're we're eager. Let's get this train moving, and let's uh, let let's move forward in confidence. And and uh, they're just they're working together. They're working hard. We've had we've had extra session meetings just so we can. Uh, try and make sure all of the bases are covered, and uh, and uh, you know if if you have um, uh, some some feedback for us about the different kinds of experiences, we're all learning this together. So feel free to give us a call down here at the office, or email us, or text message us if you have our numbers. Uh, any of the elders, or any of the staff, or any of the pastors, just uh, continue to give us that feedback, and we will uh, continue to. Um, uh, make improvements as quickly and as efficiently as we can. Uh, and you know what? I have to say that, uh, you know, the sermon on Sunday, uh, preparing that sermon impacted me incredibly. And I realized, again, because we all needed to, need to be reminded that we do all of this out of love. We love Jesus because he first loved us when we weren't worth loving. Uh, we, we love our church and we love the mission that God has given us, and we love the power that he's given it to us to accomplish that mission. And you know what? We love our brothers and sisters. We, we may get on our, each other's nerves every now and then, or we may not, you know, G-haw with everybody that we ought to G-haw with. Some of that's on us. Uh, but we love, we love our brothers and sisters, and I have just a great love for you. Uh, you have been so good to me and to my family and to... Um, uh, just the way that you uh, that you interact and pitch in and 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 participate and everything, it's just a joy to be here at the best Cumberland Presbyterian Church in the whole denomination. Certainly the best church anywhere around here, maybe in the whole world. So um, I want you to uh, approach this with joy. Uh, I want you to be diligent in, uh, in, in following everything that we've set out. I want you to be willing to flex and bend and, and really do everything you can to make this happen. This is a big step for us. Uh, and, uh, and once again, I will uh, say it again, that uh, we don't want to open anything that we think that we'll have to close back down again. Uh, we've had some of our brothers and sisters in other churches around here that have had that experience, and it is, it is a heartbreaking experience. It is a, a motivation killer. It's a momentum killer, and uh, we're going to pray for them and do everything we can to help them uh, get rolling. But we, we want to be um, extra careful so that when we open up, that we won't have to stop having Sunday school. We don't want to do that. So 
Do your part. Pitch in. Love your brothers and sisters. Consider them as more important than you. And we are going to have a splendiferous, fantabulous time. And remember, as Stuart Hamblin said, don't send your kids to Sunday school. Get out of that bed and take them. I love you. We'll see you after a while.